Hi there. My name's Rebecca, and this is my story of how I found out my parents weren't actually my parents. I don't mean I was adopted or anything like that. I mean that my real parents were stolen away and replaced by two complete strangers, and I had no idea. I bet you're asking how I didn't know. So I guess I should start from the beginning. I've been blind since I was 13 years old. Not completely blind, because I still saw colors and shapes, but my vision was so bad that I could barely make out anything beyond that. It was caused by an accident, you see, that gave me a concussion and caused severe degeneration in my eyesight. Glasses or lenses did nothing to help me see, so I had to undergo a special treatment for two years. It was scary at first, not knowing if it would improve or worsen my vision, but my parents were really supportive and did everything they could for me. Then something changed. About a week into my treatment, my parents started acting oddly. Because I couldn't see, I wasn't able to figure out what was wrong, but their behavior started to change. They didn't seem like my parents anymore. I put it down to the stress of the treatment and all of the operations and Gradually, things seemed to go back to normal. They became the usual loving parents I knew them to be. The treatment went on for two years. It was a slow, nerve-wracking process, but gradually I regained my sight and was able to see again. I was so excited. The doctors discharged me the day I recovered my eyesight, and I called a taxi to take me back home. I wanted to surprise my parents, so I didn't tell them I was coming. The first thing I wanted to see was the smile on their faces when they realized I had my eyesight back. When I got home, Mom was in the kitchen. I was about to greet her when I stopped myself, feeling a sudden sense of panic. It wasn't my mom. The woman in my kitchen was short with pointy shoulders, and I knew for a fact that my mom was taller than my dad and had a rounder physique. There was no way she could have changed that much in the last two years. I immediately thought it odd, and my instincts told me that perhaps now wasn't the best time to reveal I had my vision back. At least until I knew this woman really was my mom. Mom? I said quietly, and when she turned around, I struggled to hide my shock. This wasn't my mom at all. Her face was completely different. Honey, I didn't realize you were back. Why didn't you phone us to pick you up? She said. Her voice sounded similar to my mom's, but now that I had it paired to a face, I realized it wasn't quite the same. I told her I had wanted to come back on my own to improve my independence, and she smiled at me. I pretended to look vaguely over her shoulder, as though I couldn't see her face. Inside, I could feel myself panicking. Who was this woman, and why was she pretending to be my mom? Where were my real parents? Was my dad not my real dad either? I've made your favorite chocolate chip cookies, she said. I'll get them out of the oven, and you can tell me how the treatment went over cookies and milk. I nodded wordlessly, trying not to freak out. The best thing I could do for now was pretend everything was normal, and try and figure out exactly what was going on, and where my real parents were. I sat down and told my mom that nothing had improved yet, and the doctors weren't sure why, and she reached over to take my hand, telling me that one day I'd be able to see again. As she said it, though, I saw a dark look cross her eyes, and what would normally be a comforting gesture felt strange and threatening coming from a stranger. I was thinking, perhaps we should take you off this treatment, she told me casually as I nibbled on a cookie. I almost choked, asking her why. Well, it doesn't seem to be working. Perhaps we could try something else. I didn't know what to say. She wanted to take me off the treatment that would, that already had, given me my eyesight back. Was she worried that once I'd be able to see, I'd know she wasn't really my mom? I quickly tried to think of an excuse. How about we give it a few more weeks, and if it doesn't work then, maybe we could consider something else, I told her, hoping she'd agree. I was worried that if I stopped the treatment, I might lose my eyesight again. She eventually agreed, though I could see on her face that she was unhappy about it. I smiled at her, pretending everything was fine, and quickly went up to my room. It was amazing being able to see everything again but the whole experience was ruined by the revelation that for the past two years, my parents haven't really been my parents. A few days later, I had another appointment at the hospital. Once they dropped me off, I went inside and waited for them to leave. Then I got a taxi straight back home, asking the driver to drop me off further down the street so they wouldn't see me. 
my dad, or the person imitating him, since I soon found out he was a stranger too, was at work. But mom would still be at home. I had to sneak in somehow without her noticing, so that I could investigate. Now that I could see, there must be some kind of clue in the house to help me figure out what had happened to my parents. I waited until mom went to the bathroom, then snuck in through the back door, creeping silently up the stairs. I went and hid in the wardrobe until I heard her leave the house, presumably to go grocery shopping. Stealing my chance, I began my search of the house. Everything had changed since I last saw it. The walls had been repainted and the furniture was different too. I decided I hated it. These strangers had completely invaded my home. They had taken advantage of my blindness and stolen a life that did not belong to them. I went into their bedroom, searching through their things, until I found something that filled me with sadness. A box of my parents' old things. Bank cards and passports and old family photos. They had all been hidden at the back of the wardrobe. I touched the faces of my parents, wishing I could see them again. They had to be somewhere. I couldn't stomach the thought that they might be. I heard a car door slam outside and felt panic run through me. She must already be home. I put everything back where I had found it and ran out of the room just as the imposter appeared at the door, a shopping bag in hand. She seemed surprised to see me home, and I realized I couldn't pretend to be blind anymore. I faced her and demanded that she tell me where my real mom was. She acted innocent at first, asking what on earth I was talking about. I am your real mom, she told me. No, you're not, I said, coming down the stairs towards her. I can see now. The treatment worked, and I know you're not my mom. She dropped the shopping bag she was holding, and a glass jar shattered against the floor. A haze of anger came over her, making her eyes go down, and she took a step forward, raising her hand. I thought she was going to hit me, but she stopped herself. The anger quickly faded from her face, and she began to cry instead. I'm so sorry, she sobbed, covering her face with her hands. I'm so, so sorry. We just wanted a child. We just wanted a perfect life, that's all. We couldn't have one of our own, so we had to take someone else's. I don't understand. What are you talking about? Where are my real parents? She ended up telling me everything. She and her husband were at the hospital one day, after just finding out they could never have a child of their own, and were devastated that they couldn't start their own family. They had seen me in the hospital that day too, and had overheard the doctor talking about my blindness, and how it was unlikely I'd be able to recover my sight anytime soon. In a state of desperation, they kidnapped my parents and tricked me into believing they were my real mom and dad, so that they would be able to have a child of their own. My parents were still alive, and they'd been feeding them, but they had been locked in a house for two years while these strangers pretended to be my parents. I was horrified. I didn't even know what to say. All of this, just so that they could have their own child. I demanded that she take me to see my parents, and she agreed. She drove me to an abandoned house on the outskirts of the city, where they had been keeping my parents locked up. When I saw them, I started crying. I ran to them, throwing my arms around them, and they were so relieved to see me. The woman helped me get them both home, by which time her husband had returned from work and looked horrified that the secret had gotten out. My parents called the police to explain what had happened, and the two imposters were arrested for kidnapping and impersonating my parents. Things finally started to get back to normal. I felt horrible for what they had been through the past two years, but now I'm just glad we're back together again, and I can finally see properly. Hi there. My name is Max, and this is my story of- It began when I had to take my daughter, Lisa, to the hospital. She had always been a strong, healthy child who rarely got any illnesses, which is why we were immediately worried when she started getting sick. We decided it would be best to take her to the hospital for a checkup. 
When we got there, I went up to the receptionist and told him we had an appointment. The man behind the desk was acting a bit strange. He was completely blasé and dismissive about the whole thing, until he checked my daughter's records. Then he started to take an interest. He asked me if this was Lisa's first visit to the hospital, if she'd been having any trouble with her organs, how good her immunity was. I figured they were all standard questions, so I told him that Lisa was a very healthy girl and this was the first time she'd really gotten sick. The man seemed excited by the news, and the question he asked next completely caught me off guard. Has she ever thought about signing up for organ donation? He asked. Organ donation? I asked rather weakly. It wasn't what I had been expecting, to say the least. Yes, the receptionist said, shaking his head with apparent fervor. From her records, your daughter looks like she would be a perfect candidate. She's very healthy and has good immunity, so she would respond well to the transfer. I'm sorry, but no, I said firmly. Her organs could save someone's life. I'm sorry, but she's simply too young. My tone was final, and I turned away from the receptionist. His face had gone a full shade of red now, and he was gritting his teeth as though holding back anger. I quickly took my daughter and wife and ushered them up to the waiting room, feeling the receptionist's unnerving eyes on us the entire time. The doctor came to examine my daughter, took some blood tests, and then informed us a few hours later that she was most likely anemic, and he wanted to keep her in for further observation. She got settled into her own room, and my wife and I reassured her everything would be fine. It just meant that she had low oxygen levels in her blood, but could be easily rectified. I got settled into the chair by the bed while my wife went to get some snacks from the vending machine. She came back shortly after, looking somewhat dazed, but told me it was nothing when I asked what was wrong. After that, I ended up falling asleep. I can't be sure how long for, but when I woke up, the room felt... wrong. I was still sleepy, so I sat up and rubbed my eyes, looking around. That's when I noticed what was wrong. I was alone. The hospital room was empty. Neither my daughter or wife were there. My first thought was that maybe a doctor had come by and requested to see Lisa again, but surely they would have woken me up, or I would have heard them speaking. I wasn't usually such a heavy sleeper, so it was strange for me not to have woken up. Then I realized there was a strange taste in my mouth, something almost chemical. I started to panic, going through the possible scenarios. Had someone sedated me and taken my family? Had they been kidnapped? I rushed out of the room and hurried down to the nurse's station down the hallway, asking if any of them had seen my wife or daughter. The nurses gave me a strange look, telling me they'd seen nobody leave or enter the room, which didn't make any sense. Surely someone would have seen something. Where had they gone? Who had taken them? Leaving the nurses, I went in search of the doctor who had been assigned to my daughter, asking if he'd had them transferred to a different room. He had no idea where they were either. But the weird thing was, he hardly seemed concerned. He just shrugged and said maybe they'll come back soon, and that was that. But I knew something was wrong. They wouldn't have left without saying anything. I went back to the room and decided to wait. But I noticed other things I hadn't before. The bed was made, as though my daughter had never been in it to begin with. And there were none of our personal effects. My wife's coat was missing, and the food she had bought at the vending machine... I waited there a couple of hours, but they still didn't come back. Something strange was definitely going on. I decided to alert security then and ask if they might be able to help me locate my family, but even they seemed completely dismissive of my worries.